Good. Um, so, big fight. The one that uh, we thought was going to happen last month, you had to wait a little longer than expected. Uh, Jared, I know he's been the target for a while. How are you feeling coming into this one? Feeling good. Kind of weirdly good. No injuries, no bangs, no bruises. So, yeah, I feel real good. I see you looking down at that shirt there. Uh, can you explain that a little bit? I'm actually looking at my phone. I'm playing um, a game, making sure, you know, I'm still winning. But, um, yeah, oh, this is my shirt. I stand up against domestic abuse, so if anybody, I want to make people feel uncomfortable if they engage in those type of activities. Has that always been like kind of a, a cause that's been something that you've been interested in, uh, you know, kind of raising some more awareness for? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I'm I'm that type of guy. You know, I don't I don't like people who beat up women, so or guys who beat up women. So yeah, I definitely stand up against it. Got to respect that. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, this fight, now that you've had some time to study Jared, um, the extra month, I guess. Why, why was the fight moved, by the way? Why was it sh shoved back a month? Uh, I think they won it back up for the title fight, you know. So I didn't really – normally I would care sometimes, but I got to spend, like, 10 more days at home with the family, so I wasn't arguing too much. And I got to eat some, like, macaroni and extra food around the holidays. Is, has one of you been designated as the backup fighter? Nah, I mean, nobody haven't told me anything, but I figured I would have been, like, first up. But, you know, I was just focused on my fight at hand because I figured, you know, I figured the fight would go through, both fights would go through. So that's how I've been training. And can you just uh, break down, Jared, a little bit what you've seen uh, studying him over the last few months and what kind of you expect from him? Um, He's just a guy, just another one of these fighters. You know, he come out, try to win fights, you know, tough guy, you know. So I know what I do, and I know I'm really good at what I do. So that's the, that's the object here. Great, thanks. Derek. Is there someone in particular you're talking about when you mention the shirt? No, nobody in particular. Everybody. So what do you think about when you see other fighters and stuff get accused of this sort of shit and then they're allowed to still fight in the UFC? Do you think they should be cut or do you think they should be challenged in public or what do you think about that? I mean, I think it's kind of weak, you know. No, I don't want to say kind of, definitely weak. You know, like I said, when a guy that has physical strength over women and just beat up women, I think that's kind of weak, you know. So... Um, yeah, I mean, if a fighter engaged in those activities, for sure, they should be brought to light. But, no, I'm not really taking – I'm taking digs at everybody. Whoever, if the shoe fits, they have to wear it. So, If you did get called up to step into the main event this weekend, is there a guy you'd rather fight? Would you rather get that rematch against Israel, or would you be happy fighting Rob? I don't matter. Either or. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of the uh, Sean Strickland's performance uh, last week? He's kind of uh, kind of thrown himself into that the title mix with that that victory, saying like he is he wants new blood on the on the next guy up. I didn't watch it, so I wouldn't know. I just saw the results. I saw he won, but yeah, I didn't watch it. Uh, speaking of this fight specifically, I think a lot of people are surprised you weren't the co-main event, considering this is probably going to be a number one contender fight. Are you happy though? It's there's a fight between you and the main event, so you can finish up all your media stuff in time for, to watch the title fight? What you just said made perfect sense. So yeah, well, now that you put it like that, yeah, I guess I am. But yeah, it don't matter to me. Um, I don't even know who's fighting on the car half of the time. I just train for my fight and that's it, you know? So, and typically right before my fight, I don't watch fights. So I just kind of like stay in my little bubble, you know, all the hard work is done. I, I've trained, I did what I supposed to do. So I don't really watch too many fights like the week before mine's and, um, yeah, when I'm coming to the fight, I might look at the card and see, like, the order and stuff like that. But, like, yeah, I just, you know, focus on my fight. You got Derek Lewis and Ty after you, so that fight might not be that long anyway. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, good heavyweight fight there. Um, speaking of Jared, I think when he, because he, he obviously started at heavyweight and he came down, he was putting a lot of people away at middleweight. Do you think that was just a product of him being just, like, freakishly strong compared to the middleweights? Or do you think he is, like, a, a highly skilled martial artist in there? No, I, I just think he just, he caught some people. I know he fought David Branch, and he was able to finish him. Uh, he, he definitely caught David Branch. If you're talking about skill for skill, David Branch is super skilled when it comes to BJJ. Um, solid wrestler, good boxing. You know, Jared is a guy who's opportunistic. You know, he's staying there. You know, but I don't really put him as really great at any one thing. I think he's just a solid, tough guy, you know. Derek, how do you feel like you uh, match up against uh, Jared stylistically? Oh, I feel I match up really well, you know. Uh, he got to come out and fight the perfect fight, you know. Uh, he got he to gotta have a little luck on his side and catch me, but um, skill for skill, you know, it's not even close. This is 
Uh, this is your 20th UFC fight coming up here, and we've seen in a lot of other divisions uh, some fighters, Glover Teixeira, Charles Oliveira, these guys that hung out always at the top, and all of a sudden they're champion. Have you drawn any inspiration, and do you think there's any parallels there, so to speak? Um, yeah, I've been around for a while, you know. Um, yeah, what those guys have done has been really cool to watch, especially uh, Glover and um, what getting a title at age like 42. And, you know, Charles Oliveira, you know, he's always been super talented right in the thick of the division. So, yeah, to see guys break through definitely been pretty inspiring. What game do you have going on your phone? Oh, it's called Spades. Probably nobody here know how to play Spades. Anybody? Nah. <laughs> it's a hood game, I guess. <laughs> uh, Derek, um, there's been talk about if uh, – Whitaker wins, that there would be a trilogy. Yeah. Um, if you win, and that is the case, would you be fine just sitting on the sidelines? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to sit and wait for a title fight after I win this fight, you know, for sure. I've done everything I needed to, to do in this division, and, um, yeah, that's, that's that. If you win and Adesanya wins, this will be, I think, your sixth straight win since he beat you. He beat you before he was champ. Obviously, you were working your way towards the title in this division no matter what, but would it make you happier if it was him that you had to beat to yeah. finally win it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I plan on fighting two more times. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm lucky and blessed to, like, fight in the UFC 20 times, and I'm, like, super smart. I got a good brain on my head. So, like, I don't want to fight until I can't fight no more. So, like, I'm in the best shape. I'm feeling good. So... You know, that's my, that's, that's all I'm thinking about right now. Beating Cannoneer, beating Izzy, and riding out. That's it. Just off the back of that, so let's say, for example, things don't go your way. Would you still fight past two more times, or is it two more times and done no matter Just what? two more times. You know, uh, I spend a lot of time getting ready for these fights, you know, like away from my family and stuff, and I'm 38, you know, so I got to, it's time to be like, I'm missing like soccer games and stuff like that for my daughters and stuff like that. So like, that's more important to me than chasing money and stuff like that. You know, I've, I've been smart, my money made enough money. So like, I have no excuses. I'm in really good shape. I feel really good. I'm motivated. Like, I don't, I don't never plan on losing, but I just know that like, you can't do combat sports forever and, you know, in peacefully, whatever. And I feel like I'm like, I got a super good brain. My head is good, no injuries, nothing. So, you know, I think that's the, you know, finish my goal, finish my task, complete the mission get the title and be like, peace, I'm out. Have you got plans you set up for after fighting that you got? Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of things going on. You know, I got a lot of little businesses going on. So uh, I do a little bit of real estate. I got a gym, fight promotion, um, <clears throat> manage a little bit of fighters. So yeah, I got a lot of things going on. Cool. Uh, hi, Derek, uh, how's it going? Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on Sean Strickland. I, I know you didn't catch his last fight, but what do you make of, of the media around him, all of his antics? Uh, Sean Strickland is a weirdo. Uh, yeah, I mean, slightly funny. I guess funny in this era, if you think like the stuff he say is funny, but uh, def definitely kind of cringy, you know. Uh, super weird, you know. I think I heard some of the stuff he said. Um, I don't know if he's trying to get a lot of attention or whatever, but you know, I, I don't think it's cool to just be a a jerk or an asshole, you know saying like, oh, I'll kill people and I wouldn't care. Like, it's like, you know, if you say, hey, if somebody harmed my family, I killed somebody I wouldn't care, that's a bit different than saying I'll just kill a random person I wouldn't care, you know? So that's that's some just tasteless stuff and I don't really think there's a place for it. And yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying. I hope he changes ways for sure. In the lead into this fight, Jaron uh, Cannonier said that your only way to beat him is your wrestling. Uh, what do you make of that statement? Um... Well, I guess his only way to win is to stop my wrestling. So, yeah, I mean, it can get real ugly real quick. You know, he go to the ground with me, you know. So uh, I know he's going to be focused on that. So that opens up the other parts of my game. Derek, can I just ask who you think wins the headliner on Saturday night and how? Um, that's a good question. I think it's going to be a good fight. You know, I think Whitaker will be able to make a few adjustments. I think it'll be a more competitive fight. I think he'll keep the pace slower and um, maybe look like Izzy Romero with a little bit more action. 
Izzy said that uh, Rob's uh, improved striking has been overrated by the media. Do you, do you agree or do you think he's a completely different fighter now? I don't know. I haven't been in his camp. I don't know what he's doing in his camp. But I, would say, I wouldn't say there's any secret sauce or any like in anything crazy. I would say that, you know, he switched up a few things. I think he's going to be a little bit more patient. Like uh, Whitaker is pretty aggressive and he likes to leap in. So I think he'll be a little bit more um, patient this time and it'll slow the fight down.